Joining us live now is the Chief Market Strategist at InvestSmart, Evan Lucas, for his take. Evan, so what are the final conclusions from the market and economics world about where the cash rate will peak in this country? Yeah, so Pete, the final conclusion from all of them, they're now all in the 31 economists they normally survey across Bloomberg and Refinitiv. They've upgraded it to a consensus of 3.85%. But more importantly, there is actually three of them that believe that it could be as high as four and a half, and one even goes as far as 4.85% in terms of where the cash rate would get. That would be an incredible position, but there is one out there forecasting that. But that means that there is going Who's to be that, everybody's Evan? Uh It's a small player. I'm not going to say who it is. I, I think that needs okay. to be left to itself. Um, but there is somebody out there. <laughs> We're getting into a recession. That's a recession yeah, territory well, that, there, surely. That, that's exactly right. I mean, that, that kind of tightness, the rule of thumb is you add 2% to that, and that would be the mortgage rate roughly for the, for the country in terms of if you went to 4.85%, you add 2% on that, you're talking about 6.8%, probably more for some people as high as 7.5%. The other issue that comes with that forecast, as we spoke about last week, Pete, is that still at the moment, APRA has their 3% buffer rule and if people are applying for new loans, the ability to service a loan that is 3% above that 9% would be impossible. So that is unlikely, but it's more to the idea that, again, that means that we've got 50 basis points to go from where we are now. The incredible tightening that that is, is now bringing in that R word, as you said. The, the, the impact on the household sector, the impact on consumption, although it hasn't properly been seen yet, it is coming and you can feel it already. Yeah, and, and that's why, that's a key point there too as to why, and even the Assistant Treasurer Stephen Jones telling me this week that, that there probably will only be one or two because you would hope that they would have to factor in some lag following the busy Christmas period where people spend anyway. Yeah, and you can see that to some extent in the statement. I think the biggest thing, and getting back to your first question about what the economics world took out of this week was... Yes, they are alluding to that. I mean, last week you saw Marion Kohler, who's the head of their economic advisory board, testify to the Senate that they know 800,000 households are going to come out of their fixed rate mortgages from the pandemic, that there is going to yeah. be some really, really big pain. So they, they are aware of that, and they also talk about that in the statement. What caught the market off by guard was their forecast around inflation, and it's the line around returning inflation to 3% which when they yeah. told us in December, they thought that would be at the end of next year. Mid-2025, that's two years and four months away wow. from where it is now. And the reason that matters, they want inflation between 2 and 3%. That's their mandate. That's what they would need to do to, to maintain you know, price stability. That, therefore, suggests that they're not going to get to the top of the band for, obviously, that period of time. Therefore, the ability to think about cutting rates or easing this is probably two years away because they can't Oof. actually justify cutting rates until it's actually back into a level that it needs to be and possibly falling further. So that, that's, that's, that's always been the justification to cut rates, is that inflation's falling away from the bottom end of that, that 2 to 3% band. They're suggesting that it's not going to get there for two and a bit years, and that's the other right. part of what the economics world picked up this week, is that it's not just hawkish, it's how long they expect to hold rates there. That's frightening, isn't it? So, I mean, Philip Lowe, he, 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 he talked about the squeeze, you know. So the budgets need to be squeezed. Of course, we need to stop inflation. But when do you expect that that squeeze will be unwound? Is that likely to be next year or, or, or two years away, like you're talking about? Well, that, that's, that's the conclusion, isn't it? Right, so the, 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 the conclusion at the moment, from what we've been told from their numbers, is that it would probably be two years away. They need to squeeze yeah. and squeeze hard to get inflation down to the top of their band for a while. And, and that's what they're, they're saying, yeah. is that although they're seeing signs that, that spending is lower, it's still, and everybody will tell you this, the numbers are coming out from earnings. We are spending still above pre-pandemic levels by quite a significant margin. And we've now had nine rate rises, and there's going to be probably 10 and 11 to come in a row, mm. and we're not changing. So that's the catch, is that the squeeze is on for a while. And, and that, I don't think, has fully dawned on the overall population about what this actually means longer mm. term.